Welcome to the unboxing and demo video of the Wegard AquaSmart Borewell Submersible Pump. With a multi-stage pump design, automatic water level control and advanced protection features, this pump ensures hassle-free water management with minimal manual intervention. Inside the box, you will find a detailed user manual, a strainer to prevent foreign particles from entering the pump, a cable joining kit for safe and durable electrical connections, a high quality motor with copper whiting that supports up to 2 horsepower and operates across a wide voltage band for reliable performance, and powerful and durable pump unit built for efficient water delivery. The intelligent pump controller, also known as the Smart Panel Box, offers advanced automation and protection. A float switch, unlike traditional AC float switches that operate at hazardous voltages, this operates at a safer 12V of DC power, a dead weight and a PG gland for secure wiring and waterproof sealing of the float switch. The intelligent pump controller features an automatic on-off function that senses the water level in the overhead tank. Built-in fault indicators on the intelligent control panel to help detect voltage fluctuations, overload, dry run, rotor lock, relay shot and pump connection issues for quick troubleshooting. Smart fault logging and runtime tracking to automatically record fault history and longest continuous operation time among others. Let us now see how to install the WeGuard AquaSmart Borewell Submersible Pump. Unscrew and open the intelligent pump controller. Follow the wiring diagram provided in the user manual. These are the R, Y, B or red, yellow and blue terminals. Connect the RYB cables from the motor to the corresponding terminals in the intelligent pump controller. These are the terminals for the input supply. This is for phase and this is for neutral. Connect the corresponding wires from the input power supply and tighten it in place. Close the lid of the intelligent pump controller and tighten the screws. To use automatic turning on and off of the pump, these are the wires to connect the overhead float switch. Set a multimeter to continuity mode. Let the float switch hang down. Connect the two wires from the float switch to the multimeter leads. If the multimeter reading shows zero, it means there is continuity. These are the red, black, yellow and green wires for connecting sensors. Of these, red and black wires are the overhead float switch. Black is the common terminal. Connect these wires to the intelligent pump controller. Properly insulate all cable joints. Lower the pump into the bore well using supporting clamps and pulleys. Please consider this container as an overhead tank. Drill a 15.5 mm hole on the top side of the tank above the overflow level. Fit the PG gland into the hole. Fix the dead weight onto the float cable. And pull the float switch cable through the PG gland. Adjust the cable length inside the tank based on the required minimum reserve water level. The tank should have at least 25% water as reserve. So the float should be placed just above the 25% level, like this. The dead weight should be at 65% of the total height. This is the required water level on the tank. This will be the total height of the water level that will be controlled. Tighten the PG gland to lock the float switch position. During the trial run, check if the tank overflows. If it does, lower the dead weight. If the tank is not filling adequately, raise the dead weight.
Inspect all cables and connections for damaged or frayed ends before powering on. Turn on the power on the pump. Let us look at the various modes available in the intelligent pump controller. The float menu option allows enabling and disabling of the overhead float functionality. Press menu. Use the up or down buttons to navigate to the float option in the menu. Press the enter button. Use the up or down buttons to navigate to the EN option. Press enter to enable the float functionality. The display shows done to confirm your selection. Now, when the overhead float switch is activated, the pump starts automatically. The ON indicator turns on. The display on the intelligent pump controller shows the current load and the current status that the tank is filling. To disable the overhead float switch, as before, press menu and navigate to the float option. Press enter. Use the up or down buttons till it shows DIS for disable. Press enter. The display shows done to confirm your selection. Now the pump can be manually turned on or off using these buttons on the intelligent pump controller. Press start to start the pump. The display indicates that the float is disabled. Press stop to stop the pump. The display confirms that the pump is now off. The normal mode enables the pump's normal operating mode. Press menu. Use the up or down buttons to navigate to the NOR option in the menu. Press enter. Navigate to the EN option. Press enter to enable the normal mode. The display shows done to confirm your selection. If normal mode is enabled, both scheduler and timer mode will be disabled. If the float is disabled, you can run the pump using the start and stop buttons on the panel. If the float is enabled, the pump will run automatically based on the water level in the overhead tank. The schedule settings allow you to automate pump operation based on specific timings. You can configure up to two schedules. Let us show you how to set schedule 1 for the morning. Press menu. Navigate to the SCH1 or Schedule 1 option. Press Enter. S on appears, prompting you to set the timer when Schedule 1 should start. Press Enter to begin setting the time. Similar to the real-time clock, the own time is displayed in a 24-hour format. Use the up or down buttons to first adjust the hours. Press Enter and adjust the minutes. Press Enter to confirm. Now set the hours and minutes when you want Schedule 1 to end. Press Enter. Ian appears, indicating that you can enable Schedule 1 if desired. You can see the Disable option by scrolling up or down. Navigate to the Ian option and press Enter to enable Schedule 1. The intelligent pump controller display indicates that a schedule is enabled. Similarly, you can set schedule to any other time you prefer. Schedulers work alongside float switch levels for automation, adjusted according to your water supply requirements. The hour or real-time clock must be set for schedulers to function correctly. Press menu, navigate to the R option, press enter. The time is displayed in a 24-hour format. Use the up or down buttons to first adjust the R. Press enter. Similarly, adjust the minutes. Press enter to set the real-time clock in the intelligent pump controller. The buzzer setting allow customization of startup and pump on or off beep notifications. Press menu and navigate to the beep menu option. Press enter. Select EN to enable or DIS to disable the buzzer notifications. Fault beeps will remain active regardless of your selection. Press enter to save your selection. The timer mode allows the pump to operate for a specific duration. Press menu and navigate to the TIMR option. 
press enter. It shows off, indicating the timer is currently not active. Press enter. Select the duration you want the pump to work for in a 24 hour format. The range is adjustable from 1 minute to 24 hours. Press enter. The pump starts working. The TR indicator glows. When active, the timer mode overrides other operational modes such as scheduler and float switch. To turn off the timer mode, navigate to the TIMR option. Reduce the hours and minutes to zero to reach the off option. Press enter. The timer is now turned off. Dry run protection helps prevent motor damage. Press menu and navigate to C, O, N, F or configuration mode. Press enter. Once you see DRY, press enter. This is the default dry run cutoff time in 24 hours format. Use the up and down buttons to set the cutoff time from 1 second to 12 minutes. Press enter to save. The fill menu option allows you to set the maximum single run time for the pump, providing an additional layer of protection. Press menu and navigate to the fill option. The maximum fill time can be configured from 1 minute to 24 hours. Use the up and down buttons to adjust the desired fill time. Press enter to save. Default log records the last 5 faults along with voltage and current readings. Press the menu button and use the up or down buttons to navigate till log is displayed. Press enter. Use the up button to cycle through the fault cords. Each fault is identified by a code as shown here. Press the down button to view the voltage and current readings associated with the selected fault. If fewer than 5 faults are recorded, empty slots will appear as in the log. The fault indication lights on the intelligent pump controller will help you identify and resolve issues quickly. Here is a list of fault indications and their descriptions. Use this information to diagnose and address faults effectively. The Auto Retry feature helps recover from faults without manual intervention, reducing downtime. For dry run protection, the intelligent pump controller attempts to restart the pump after 30 minutes up to 3 times. For other types of faults, the retry time is set to 30 minutes and maximum retry attempts of 5. If all retry attempts fail, manually reset the pump by turning off the main power supply for 2 seconds, then switching it back on. The intelligent pump controller can also help diagnose other issues. If R not set is displayed, it indicates the time has not been set. Ensure the time is correctly configured in the real-time clock or R menu before proceeding. If low battery is displayed, it indicates that the real-time clock battery has a low charge. Replace the battery with a 3V lithium CR2032 battery to resolve this issue. After you replace the battery, R will be displayed. Set the real-time clock to resolve this error. WeGuard AquaSmart Borewell Submersible Pump is built for reliable, efficient water management. Remember to activate your product warranty. This pump is your trusted partner for hassle-free water management.